<clears throat> shalom, shalom, shalom. Most high in Christ, blessed thank y'all for tuning out UIC Radio, 24-7 radio station. Sorry for the inconvenience of the time, uh, technical difficulties. Uh, but we're back, all right? Uh, and today's topic is the Israelites are a cursed people, all right? And we're going to go through certain uh, situations on why we are, uh, boy, look at that, already. Free. People can't wait to get on here. What do y'all do? Literally, what do y'all do? Y'all wake up and say, oh, man, I can't. I'm going to get a good night's rest, eat a good dinner, eat a, get a good night's rest, and I'm going to get up and write all kind of crazy stuff on on uh, the Periscope. <laughs> What's wrong with people, man? So, uh, hey, it is what it is. We ain't got no scoffers, so we ain't doing nothing right. You know what I'm saying? So, we're going to get on this class. Uh, we're going to get straight to it. We ain't going to take a break. We're going to get straight to it. Uh, we're going to go straight into the scriptures. Uh, first of all, what the officer uh, just got done telling me was that uh, Venezuela is... Uh, is going basically going through like a not a siege but similar to it I meaning they don't have any food uh the uh, he said what inflation inflation yeah. meaning like the food costs so much money to get and people can't afford it all right the people cannot afford to eat uh and people are running out of food you know how to explain it better than i do go ahead all right in a nutshell, Venezuela, right? I guess something with their new leader or something like that. I guess he jacked up something major. So inflation, their money is basically worth nothing. They have to spend like four to five hundred dollars for a loaf of bread. Nobody can afford that. You can't you just imagine going to Walmart and having to pay five hundred dollars for a loaf of bread. That's that's probably your whole two weeks paycheck. So basically what they did, they start robbing course you know what i'm saying the grocery stores are completely empty all the shelves are empty they don't have any money to go buy more groceries to restock because everybody stole it all now there's i mean there's no food left so a lot of them thousands and thousands of them are like plan on leaving venezuela to go to another country for food shelter and everything else that they need i mean it's 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 horrible <laughs> I seen I seen some on the this horrible bro. You know what's crazy though? America is gonna sit there, they gonna uh put it on the uh the news, have everybody see it, and won't do a damn thing about it. I really have heard the news actually say anything about it. I have to go online to look and see find information. America, they always want they wanna go over to the day foreign countries and say, Oh, they treat these guys bad. They're killing each other, they're Cutting off heads. Let's go over there. That's gonna put a military over there, rebuild it. But guess what? You got people over there that are starving, but they will. I guarantee they won't do nothing. You won't see a, a ten cents a day uh, commercial for them. Even if you did, they would never see the money ever. It's like who was that stole some money? Uh, was it uh? What was it? Dang! What what um? Uh, not feed the children. What was it? It was. Dang, what was it? I think it was Red it. Cross. That's what it was. <laughs> Red Cross stealing all that money, having those sad African commercials. You know, you see this this little African girl got flies all over her face. <laughs> uh, they talking about uh, the food. They talking about for ten cents a day, we can. Uh, you can save this child's life. <laughs> All right, you can get her a better education in those schools. And we're going to lose the intensity a day. And I'll be thinking, when I look at those commercials, with them, when Esau will be over there in the other country, in Africa or whatever, I'll be wondering, like, have you paid 10 cents? Are you adopting a child? How many African kids you got? And they got none, but they're asking you to pay for them and adopt these children or, or send some money. He said, uh, it'll be a paycheck. Say it again. It'll be a paycheck if you have United States of America help. Venezuela. 
What's up? Let me tell you what happened to me. Um, <clears throat> when Katrina came, uh, they took everything from everybody. Like uh, <clears throat> they gave us checks, right? But well, they uh, they gave certain people more than other people. I got two thousand um, dollars. Then, like I want to say, five years later, five years after Katrina, they sent me a letter saying I want the two thousand dollars back. Oh, we're gonna take you to court. Oh, we're gonna garnish your wages. Now, this is money that they take out your check. FEMA take that money out your check every week. So in case uh, a national disaster happen, uh, they can pay you. They can give you money. But they took that, they gave me the $2,000, sent me a letter, wanted it back. I said, well, you want to take me to court? <laughs> they ain't get that $2,000 back. You know what? Somebody, you right. I guarantee you America got something to do with it. It ain't got nothing to do with Venezuela's independence. It got nothing to do with that. I don't think Cuba going through that right now. There's a lot of countries that's going in through that right now. You know what I'm saying? That's dependent and, and still uh, probably don't have as much, but you can't, I'll guarantee you America got something to do with it. Yeah. They sit there watching, seeing how they're going to react because they know they Israel too. They're going to sit back, let them die. And I guarantee you, like you said before, somebody has done something with their kid. <laughs> right. Watch this. Through food or, or whatever the case may be. Right. I got an article. and crumbling medical sector have become such a source of anguish that a growing number of young women are reluctantly opting for sterilization rather than face the hardship of pregnancy and child rearing. So they basically cut their lineage off. The young women, you understand what I'm saying? They cut it off. Because they don't know, uh, they don't know how long this is gonna happen. Why would you bring a child in, in in these conditions. Right, how about just not have sex? But you're going through the whole step of never going to have a child, period. No matter if everything turns around, you still won't be able to have a child if you stay alive. Give me that, uh, give me that scripture in Deuteronomy. You have something? No, the Deuteronomy 28? Yeah. Which scripture? How does it work? About the... Is it fifty something? You know I want. About the delicate what among you and child eat, basically. Yeah, but that that siege, it's not a necessarily a, a siege, but it's it's similar to that. And that happened to us back uh back in the day where they seized us out uh to where we had no food whatsoever. And we had to <laughs> We end up starting going against, like you said, it started the robbery. I guarantee people have died and killed one another. You know what I'm saying? They've killed one another and all kind of things. Probably killed kids, took them, cap, kidnapped them. You know what I'm saying? For, for a couple of rights. Because it's that bad over there. You know what I'm saying? You got it? Yeah. Read. It says Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 53. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thy own body. Meaning you might eat, you're going to eat your kids. The fruit of your own body. Just imagine, it can get that bad to where we've done, that happened to before. Where we've been sieged out so badly that we had to do what? We had to go, we had to eat our children, which is bad. You know what I'm saying? That was a curse amongst us. Just imagine that your child died, and that's the that's your source of food now. Die because they're too weak to be able to survive. Just imagine that, man. Come on. The flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which uh -huh. the Lord thy God hath given thee come on. in the siege. In the and, siege, come on. And in the straightness wherewith thy enemy shall distress thee. Come on. 
so that the man that is tender among you and very delicate. And you know what? That's right. Somebody just put a very pivotal point. I'll just get to that next. Venezuela need to repent. It's that time now. The most high God is afflicting them right now. You talking about the worst affliction. When you ain't got nothing to eat, you can't just go to McDonald's and uh, <laughs> get you something to eat because the, the money ain't there. You know what I'm saying? It just, it's, a lot, it's a lot of bad stuff happening. Now it's time for Venezuela to freaking repent. Northern Kingdom in whole, like Brazil. Yeah. People don't know how many people died during the building of the uh, stadium for the Olympics. A lot of people died for that to be built. A lot of people. Right, exactly. Brazil is going through it. Them cops is over there putting it to death too. Ain't no difference. You know what I'm saying? Mexico, all the north, all this northern kingdom. It's time for you to start doing what? Start keeping the commandments. Period. It's time for you to wake up. Judah, Benjamin, and Levi is is, is waking up. Shoot, Judah is up. Now it's time for northern kingdom to come and repent. Venezuela need to repent. Period. All right? It's that time. South America, right? Go ahead. Verse 54. Mm -hmm. So that the man that is tender in uh, excuse me, tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom. And that's what's gonna happen. Through the siege, through the I mean not the siege, but in this point was the siege. You're going to have an evil eye to your brother and even to your wife, your spouse and everything because all you can think about is, man, i got, I got to eat something. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I'm willing to take somebody's life. It, it's a siege. I would call it a siege. The reason why is because obviously the food is being imported in or else they would have food. You see what I'm saying? Like, or the seeds. I mean, it, like somebody have. has to be sending the food to them because for a country to run out of food, but you're growing your own food, that wouldn't make any sense. Usually those countries are growing their own food. When they have... Some that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. America probably sitting back and is like, yeah, mm -hmm. the hell with y'all. <laughs> right. This the bread is $500 now. Right. No one they can't pay it. But then you know what happens? You know what? I'm going to give it to you for less than that. You got to do this, 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 and that. You gotta give us. You gotta. We gotta be able to import this, this, and that through, through, through this. Listen, America is sitting back, watch, watching. <laughs> but guess what? Venezuela, you better repent. And no, you can get uh, Hosea five and fifteen. Then when they right. Come, when they, when they come, they seem like gods. Right. Oh, they came to save us. Yeah. They came. They wait. They wait until you. Killing each other, you know, hurt each other, stealing from each other, eating your own babies, like the officer was saying. Until you get desperate, then here they come, and they was like, "Oh my God, here come God." <laughs> here come right. God, they saving us. And the uh, so-called white man make you feel that way, the way he do things. He'll buy my country and then throw food on. <laughs> then he go throw food relief. This is this is the so-called white man. He'll buy my country, then come back and send. Uh, food aid. It is devil, the Bible speaks of. But guess what? We got to repent. Venezuela, you got to repent. It's that time. Brazil, Mexico, uh, Peru, uh, give me some more. Uh, El Salvador, all the South America, y'all got to repent. What, 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 what y'all got to quit. Y'all got to gotta repent, man. It's that time. Colombia with Guatemala. Uh, Panamania, y'all gotta repent. It's that time. It's gonna get worse. This is nothing. It's gonna get worse. You got that? And, and What's that? When you get that inflation. Right. Yeah. Uh, so it actually is a siege. Just because they're using money, it's, it's they're pretty much shutting them out mm -hmm. from getting food. So it is a siege. Yeah, Just because they're not using military forces to block them in, it's still a siege. It's just they doing it financially because they know that our people can't afford it. Right. And they, um, you know, America run the waters. So anything they get shipped is them, you know. So what, what is this? Uh, Basically, Venezuela was a, uh, a country that uh, exported oil. Mm. 
So when oil prices dropped from like $100 a barrel to $44 in 19 cent, who controls the pricing of oil? America. That's when, because he said before that, at the top, in 1999, when this dude came in power, uh, the, the, saw a massive reduction in poverty, more children in school, and, and good, clean water. Since the decline, the uh, inflation rate went from basically zero in 2000 to now, uh, inflation rate is 1,642%. Right. So it says Venezuela has the world's highest inflation rate. So like, like you said, it went from, dang, so they've been going through this for a while. It went from zero, like you said, to uh, 481%, and then skyrocketed to 16, uh, 1,642%. That is crazy, that is unheard of, bro. Because that, <laughs> That means something, oh, said, something that was a dollar earlier this year was $481. And now something that was a dollar now is $1,642. Which makes it impossible. Impossible. But guess what? I guarantee you the police is over there is eating. The military is eating over there. Whatever they got is eating. And they get protected by, man, listen, America got their hands in it. You can't tell me they don't. They got something to do with it. You know, all right? Get that, uh, what's that? It says, uh, the impact of the country's problems are all too obvious to most Venezuelans. Shortage of food and home staples like milk, flour, and toilet paper. So they can't even wipe their behind. It says shortages of medicine, meaning they, there's a lot of people getting sick. This is the worst time. When you seize out, your body weak, you're more prone to the disease. Sickness, and if they don't have anything to help you. And you can't wipe your, your, your body, you can't wipe your, yeah, that, this gonna be like, the smell is probably so bad, for man. real, like. It says, rolling blackouts, rising unemployment, soaring violent crime, even malaria, once almost uh, eradicated, is back on the rise. Now that's embarrassing. How, how can it be eradicated, and then all of a sudden this siege, <laughs> <laughs> and it comes and back. And now malaria is all up in that thing. Right. And CDC controls every known virus and disease on planet Earth. They have it in a, in a, in a laboratory. So if they wanted to drop malaria into something, they just got to go get a valve of it and drop it into a person and let it spread. Right. And what's crazy is that when uh, Venezuela is like a, like a tourist country, too. Right. So they gotta have food. Somebody is important, like you said, you're right. Somebody is importing food because the rich part of Venezuela, by the beaches and all that stuff, oh, they got food. America gonna make sure they got that. They you run a war. They run a war. You dang right. They gonna make sure that they got it. So just imagine that, bro. <laughs> we all control the world orders, control the world. And that's Esau. Esau controls all of that. Esau won't mow land. So Esau will starve people out, make sure that they self-destruct, and they come in and clean up. Right, and they don't have Red Cross right there. And then the people that's still alive is going to be serious. working for pennies on a dollar. They don't have Red Cross right there. Dang, in 2000, it said the crude oil prices over the last five years. In 2012, it went from $100. $100. And so that, that ain't bad. It went from $100 down to 80 and it started going up past $100, and it was like pretty much between 90 to 100 and something dollars, right? And then in 2015, it went all the way down to 40 bucks. And then it been going up and down, up and down. And in 16, it dropped to what? What's that, 30? Mm -hmm. Yeah. About $30. And then later, right now, it's up to $44.19. So just imagine a $60 decrease in that. Per barrel. <laughs> you know how much money they losing? That's crazy. And man, listen, repent. It's time to repent. Get, uh, you got that, Hosea 5, 15? Yes, sir. Okay. Hosea chapter 5, verse 15. Come on. I will go and return to my place uh -huh. till they acknowledge their and, offense. Until they acknowledge their offense. And the reason why this is happening is because they're in the midst of sin. They are in the midst of sin. Only person that can save them right now is the Most High God. 
All right, that's it. That's the only thing. They come back to this Bible, the most high will start, listen, he'll start dealing with them. He jacking they behind up right now. And he gonna use Esau to do it. Come on. And seek my face. And seek his face. You gotta seek the most high God. When you go, listen, you going through a food city, you like, God, why? Why is this happening? What do I need to do to stop this? That's when you start to like, you know what? I need to do what he says. I need to do what he says. Come on. In their affliction, uh -huh. they will seek me early. By them being afflicted, them being basically sieged, they're going to seek him early. And if they don't, it's going to get worse. Oh, yeah. It's going to get worse. Because it said in 1990, their poverty is almost eradicated. They had schools. Everything was only up and up. But they won't keep it God's commandments. So, okay, he said, y'all think y'all really going to prosper without keeping my commandments, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Check this out. And in a year, it went from, like, because if you look at that chart again, if in one year, let's say two years, from 2014 to now, two years, it went from basically no inflation to the highest inflation the world has ever seen. Right. Check this out. This is what it says. It says, no dollars for imports. The falling oil prices almost meant less foreign currency being available for Venezuela's government and that the hit the ability to import items. There are now critical shortages of goods produced, uh, produced outside Venezuela, including medicine. So that influx, man, that influx, that's how they was getting paid. That's how the government was getting paid through that oil. That, that freaking $60 of, uh, what is it? I don't say it. That decrease in money, the $60, they lose $60 each barrel. Just imagine. It's going to get worse. It's going to, it's going to continue to go down until something happens. And I guarantee you, Esau, Esau got some plan up his sleeve. He did. That's why oil prices dropped so low. You got to stay up. And we probably bought all of it. This is right. This is... <laughs> Look, when gas was a dollar seven, what was it last December? Somebody was not eating in Venezuela. That's how it works. They drop it so low that they say we can't pay you a hundred dollars no more. You better take this forty dollars. If you don't take this forty dollars, we will go somewhere else and buy it. Man, the true gangster of the world. Right, and they said okay, gangster. they need the money. I mean, so they say okay, we'll we'll buy it for forty dollars. But they ain't got enough money to now outsource right. and buy other right. produce. Right. Or dig and stuff. Right. I guarantee you they got the money to do what? Keep uh the the uh the tourist part up. That's where all the money is probably going. Right. They gotta have food, they have to have new things, the clean water. Because they they make money like that. The country makes money by having people fly out. Esau fly over there. Right. But I guarantee Esau got his hand in all of those resorts. Oh, yeah. So Venezuela really don't make the money from it. Oh, so you said something powerful uh, about them needing to wake up and repent. You went to the uh, right scripture. Keep on reading. Yeah, we're going to keep reading that. Keep reading. Keep reading. Yeah. This is Hosea chapter 6, verse 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord, uh -huh. for he hath torn and he will heal us. We have to he hath torn and he will heal us. They are being torn right now. And the only person that can heal them is the Most High God. If we seek him early. Now is the time to repent. Northern Kingdom, you got to repent. Wake up. You uh, Hispanics, Native American Indians, it's time for you to Don't repent. Y'all got to repent. Y'all have to repent, all right? Because this thing can happen to Puerto Rico. It can happen to Cuba. It can happen to Peru, El Salvador. Listen, it's poor over there in Brazil. Brazil is probably one of the, one of the biggest freaking, uh, what is it? Uh, it is, it's huge. It's freaking humongous, bro. Brazil is huge. I mean, they got a lot of people over there too. But just imagine, look what's going on. Poverty. Only way to make some dang money is through what? The freaking porn industry. Right. And that's Esau coming over there and spreading freaking AIDS and killing the dang people off. Right. Or have them working as servants in, in the tourist spots. Right. They the waiters. They the waitresses. They the ones, you know, making your beds, you know, in your hotel. That's the only way that Esau does that for a reason. 
And that's what's going to happen to these ministers. They're going to take this, 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 this famine, wait for people to die, come in, rebuild, and whoever's left is going to be working for them. They've done they it so be many to. times before. They're going to be happy to because you saved my life. Right. And they go, oh, my God, they're going to reverence the white man like he's God, like that's, you said. That's why I brought up Katrina because when they, they was mad at first. But when they actually started helping people, they was like, they didn't care. I'm like, we're just glad you're here. They forgot about they were stopping us from moving across the borders. They had, we can get drinking water. They had lights. No. You stay right here. And it'll tell you another crazy thing how Esau is. Uh, on the cruise ship, right? There's nothing but, there's nobody from America that's really working there. There's other countries, right? Right. And they on the, they on the ship. Right. Do you know Esau, instead of paying them like a regular wage or whatever the case may be, they pay them according to the currency of where they live in. So that's pennies. Right. So some people might have the same amount of, let's say with somebody from Germany, which is a lo money is more than America. Right. Because right. they're in Europe. They right. Europe. So say for instance, they get paid twenty, uh, like say fifteen dollars an hour. You know, really, it would be like sixteen, seventeen dollars an hour for them. Right. <clears throat> Somebody else <laughs> get paid two fifty. Probably get paid five dollars an hour, according to it. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it really just depends. So the higher you, it, it, it just it's sad, man, that they treat them like that. You talking about they? They talking about they? It's all it's nothing but foreign people on there. But nothing Tell but the foreign, and there's a lot of Puerto Ricans, Venezuelans, and uh, Brazilians. Of course, you got the Jamaicans and uh, uh, Haitians. Haitians, all of them are, are on there. Tell them the story that you said when y'all got off the boat. It's all that food. Oh, and they wouldn't even give it to the people that's starving. Wait, that Listen, I've been to, I've been to Haiti what two, three times. Been to Haiti a couple times, right? And this before I even came into the truth. This was when I was in the world. Uh, we, we on the cruise. We on the ship, right? And. The best food I ever had in my life. The uh, what they do is when you get out, like say for you on the uh, on the you get off on the tourist part of of uh, Haiti. Like this, and it's, it's a tourist part of Haiti. You get off. It's called uh, yeah. You get off and you go into like the little the little uh, little walkthrough or whatever the case may be. And you go to where the beach is, right? The beach is beautiful, and they have an area over here to where they actually have cooked the food, placed the food to where you can go over and eat on the island, right? And behind that, uh, you have the Haitians that's actually over there selling handmade stuff, right? That's where they make their money at. They make their money there for when you come and buy, when tourists come and buy the things that they've had. Don't, Haitians, I mean, listen, Levi's a beast, man, at making stuff. And, it's, and listen, you talking about it is hot. It is hot, bro. And everybody pretty much selling the same thing. So it's really about who sells what, who got the better, you know what I'm saying, the gift of gab, or who want to buy. Fresh paintings and all that. We went over there and we ate the food. No, we went, no, yeah, we ate We ate first. We went ate or whatever, chilled on the beach. We went over there and we spent some money. We spent a lot of money, man, because we, we were like, dang, man, look at the conditions. They have a freaking gate that blocks everything off, bro. <laughs> Only people that can get through there are the people that say can sell it, and they got to have, like, light, I mean, some type of, some type of uh, security to be able to be on that side of the gate. The rest of it is gated off, bro. It's sad. And that's the, and then what happened was, after we went over there, talked to them, spent money, we left. They was hungry. So I'm thinking in my mind, like, dang, you know what, they probably gonna get this food to them, you know what I'm saying, because they've been here, they sell it, they're doing a good job. Esau threw all of that food away. Threw it away. Bruh, you talking about a lot of food. They threw all the food away. These people is hungry. That's the same thing I saw when I went to the Bahamas. They were throwing food away, and I asked the guy why. He said, if we give them the food, they can sit, they can sue us. Man, what else? That was a bull crap. So what? Hold on. So why would they feed y'all the food then? Bro, 
What happened was, this, this, check this out. And the reason why I knew there was an issue that they was hungry because some people was bringing like they food, like over there window eating, and they was just asking, can you go get me some food? Can you get me some food? They ate, bro. They out there in the hot sun trying to sell and make a living to go back home. And then I went the next year, bro. Listen, we brought all kind of plates over <laughs> We brought all kind of plates over You talking about, listen, I spent maybe, and it's cheap. I spent probably $100, $200 the next time I went. I made sure they was getting some food. And we knew. And I went with the, I went, I went with the same people. My partners, and, my partners and so forth, my family. Listen, we seen what happened. It wasn't just me like, dang, why are they doing that? No. All of us seen it. We was like, Todd, this is messed up, bro. They over here really putting in the work. And they don't, if, they don't, if you don't buy from them, they don't eat, bro. And then you throw hundreds and hundreds of pounds of food away and don't give them any? That's pure hatred. Man. That's pure hatred. I'd rather throw this food away than to feed your black. And that's exactly what it is. Exactly pretty much what it is. It was a spit in the face. Oh, you smell all this beautiful food? Yeah, you see the tourists eating it? Hold it, it's leftovers. Dump it right in their face. That, that's how they do it. It's evil, bro. It's, <laughs> it's evil. I can't even live with this cell, man. They have no conscience. They right. have no conscience. Right, exactly. Read, read, keep finish that. This is Hosea chapter 6, verse 1. Come and let us return unto the Lord, uh -huh. for he hath torn, and he will heal us. Mm -hmm. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. Mm -hmm. After two days will he revive us. In the third day, he will raise us up, and we will live in his sight. So we got to repent, man. We must repent so we can live in his sight. We got to keep the commandments. We got to keep the commandments, man. We got to come back. All these, we all are being afflicted. We all, are, you ain't seeing nothing about New Zealand being afflicted or Australia being, being afflicted or anything like that. Russia, it's all of South America, the blacks and Hispanics that's in America being afflicted. No matter where we go, it don't matter. It don't matter where we go. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, in Germany, it was a, it was a special about uh, in Germany, I think it was Germany, somewhere in Europe, where uh, little kids was, was homeless and they were sniffing paint. Oh yeah, I remember You know what I'm talking about? I remember that. Who cares what they? Little Hispanic and black kids that was in Germany, <laughs> homeless, sniffing paint, that getting high. You listen, they got it's a bunch of them too. Paint, yeah, a lot of a bunch them. of them. Paint all over their face. Mm. They'll rob you and kill you. Yeah, because their brain is gone. <laughs> Done. Brother's Done. Hungry. Just imagine that, but no matter where you go, it don't matter where you go, you're gonna be afflicted. For I, I just heard that, uh, I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard it, uh, a couple sources. You know, you really can't believe Facebook. But you know what, I wouldn't doubt it because Negroes think they smart. That, uh, what's his name? Uh, Dwight Howard was talking about going. Uh, no, to, Amari Stoudemire. Amari Stoudemire was talking about moving to Jer uh, Jerusalem. Oh, my God. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. What? <laughs> what? I don't know why the people think they can escape this. Dang. You cannot escape the most high God. You can't do it. They're going to be with you forever. Get that. Deuteronomy 28. Uh, Pursue you, overtake you. Yes. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Till thou be destroyed. This is always, this is what's going to happen. It don't matter where you go. Our people's going to be in the slums and the ghettos and being afflicted. It doesn't matter. Even if you, you, you think it's your own country. Just imagine it, like Mexico. Mexico is, is pretty much poor. In certain areas, it's, it's, it's nice. In certain areas, of course, if you the got tourists, the money. Mm -hmm. For the tourist part and yeah. so forth. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful country. But most of the people that's poor as hell. Go to Cuba. Same thing. Even though they happy. But... They ain't got nothing. They got cars still from the 70s and the 80s. That's why they said Cuba has probably the best mechanics ever. 
because they fixed all these cars from freaking 40 years ago and they still, they still working work today. today. They still work. That's our people, man. Right. So just imagine that. Why, why, why America ain't sending uh, people, and they probably got some of the best, I think they have some of the best uh, doctors too. They have a program where you can go over to the middle, medical school for free in Cuba. Mm -hmm. For free. America has Gu Guantanamo Bay, and he still ain't supporting the Cubans because whatever. Well, you know, Fidel can't stand America. No, he can't. And he knew what they was about. Fidel could not stand America. Same thing with Che. That's what che couldn't stand America. They was, willing, they, they, they was willing to go through what they went through so they wouldn't have to deal with America because they see how it goes. That's why the Cubans can't go back to freaking Cuba. After they come over there and go to Florida, they want to come back home. No, you stay there. You've been Americanized. You think you him? That's why they want to let them come back. What the heck? No, man. You move. You want to leave, then buy. Buy. Don't come back. Right. You know what I'm saying? But that's the thing, though. America got their hands in everything because why? Esau is afflicting us. That's right. Because it's a curse. The Most High God is using him to put his foot in our behind. To wake us up. It's time to wake up, man. It's time to wake up. Those of you, we got a few people over here in Puerto Rico. Listen, it's time for you to go out there and pass some Spanish flyers out, man. Those of you that's in, that's in Puerto Rico, Venezuela, I know we had a few people on here from, from the Spanish uh, countries. It's time for y'all to get those flyers out and start teaching the people. Right. It's what it's time for. So people can understand what's going on. All right? Because they don't know why this is happening. No, they don't. That's why, that's why the Most High put the Spirit on us to go out and teach our people, to show our people, and warn them. Give me that. Um, uh... Ezekiel 3 and 17. It said, yes, I brought, I brought an Issachar bro on here for a Christian pastor to learn. To pass out Spanish flyers in Cuba and Venezuela. Right. That'd be dope, man. Listen, <laughs> we need it. We need it, man. They need, all these Spanish countries need to wake up. It's that time. It is that time. The Most High God is waiting on y'all to wake up. Waiting on y'all. All right? Come on, Brother King. You got it? This is Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17. Come on. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Unto the house of Israel. We the people that's looking over the house of Israel. We out there going out and trying to tell our people they need to wake up. Change your life. Come back to God's commandments. Come on. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth. Come on. And give them warning from me. Uh, and give them warning. Give them warning from me. Because they got to come up out of their wickedness. They got to start keeping God's commandments or the Most High God is going to destroy you. He's going to send Christ down here to take you out forever. You're being afflicted now. The only person you can go to now is the Most High God. All right? The Most High God. And let's imagine how they got to go through it. Right. They had all kind of a idolatry. All kind of stuff is going on. And that's why it fell from when they were where were successful into it what seventeen years to the worst of the worst because of idolatry and not keeping God's commandments. God will not allow us to prosper without keeping God's commandments. Right. It's just not gonna happen. Um, so where's that big old statue of um, white Christ? That's in Brazil. Brazil. That's in Brazil. That's in Rio de Janeiro. Oh, okay, well that's on this that's why they're going through it. That's the biggest slap in the dang face. That's the biggest slap in the face. Right there. You put white Jesus, a freaking 100 foot white man up there with his hands spread out like he's looking over and ain't nothing but poverty at the bottom of it. Damn. Right. They so put it on a high mountain so that everybody that lives in Rio de Janeiro, because Rio de Janeiro is kind of like hilly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's at the highest point it could be. Look at, look up at me. Right. Worship me. Idolatry. That's what it is. That's what Esau did. That's crazy, Man, bro. bro. So when you come to freaking Brazil and you white, they look at you like God. Yep. Yep. What do you want to do? What, what, what do you want? 
give you everything. Every, and that's everywhere. All of a sudden, um, no, did you go through that when you was over there in um, one of them countries? They called you a what? They was looking at the white man as a guy. He showed us this video, right, when he was overseas. And everywhere the white man go, they look at him as God. Oh, but yeah. him, they told him, what they told you, officer? So we, we just woke up to get started on our mission over in uh, Afghanistan. And it was me and two Issacharites. They light-skinned One of them is darker. That's what but I like the, uh, the, the Ishmaelites, they was like, you're a nigger. And we like them better. And we like the white people even better than them. Bro, this is on video. He got it on video. Dang. I was like, it made me mad, bro. I had to walk out my house. Every time that I walked out around them, they had the kids are scattered. But when the white man walked up to them, they gathered around them. Yeah, and you know what? That's that's in Brazil too, where like light skin and dark skin, it's a division there. Yeah, it's a division of light skin and dark skin. They hate each other too. Just imagine that, bro. Just imagine the the. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. He's so done that. He's so done that. He done that over here. He would yep. put the light skin inside. You know, he made that division. Right. And he did that everywhere. He went around. When he went around conquering, he did that everywhere. Can I get him? That's part of this. That's part of this slavery, too. Right. He brought the light skin boy yeah. in there for, to be a house nigga. Right. Leave the dark skin Negro out there to be a dang field. It's <laughs> like Job 924. They had yeah. light skin Negro dress nice. Joe. Dress nice and everything. Right. Because it's. it's I mean, we went through it hard. You understand know what, what I'm saying? They basically beat the black skin, dark skin thing, 924. Because this is what Esau do. He'll put an image of white Christ up there. And everybody, so if they're closer to that complexion of Christ, they feel like they're better. Right. In the dark, and they paint the devil as being this dark black dude or a demon as being super black. So if you're closer to that color, you're evil. Right. They painted it, they've done that to everybody, but read that. John chapter 9. No, verse no, Job 9, 24. No, Job chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. If y'all don't know who the wicked is by now, y'all sleep. Read. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. The judges were all black men or men of color. He painted them all white. So what does that do to the mental psyche? Nigga, you ain't no good. I'm, I'm super light. I'm almost close to them. That puts that mental complex in your mind. Read. If not, where and who is he? If it ain't the white man, who and where is he? Bro. You don't see black uh, Paul. You don't see black John the Baptist. You don't see black Jesus. You don't see black angels. Because every time you see a black angel, what do you call it? A demon. Bro, not only that, he didn't. The, the, the so-called leaders of us have no power in, in doing anything for us. Those supposed to be the men, the, the Al Sharptons, the, uh, the Jesse Jacksons, those supposed to be the men, the, the esteem, high esteemed men to judge us or keep us in check, right? But guess what? They send them out there to give us a gift which is going to destroy them. Say, all right, y'all calm down. Y'all calm down. Right. But guess what? They covering them because they don't they don't have any power. They're they're dictated by of the American government by the right. white man. That's what uh, Obama was about. <coughs> that's well, that's it. Just, that's just giving them a. This is putting them there so they can calm down, shut up. But that's, they do nothing for us. Right. That's really put these niggas. Asleep. Cause you remember that's how mad had. we were during after after Katrina? Yeah, we Everybody's mad. like, man, this country ain't for us, man. They hate us. Guess that? They put a black president up. Right. They right. had to. They had to. They had to. So starting to wake up. We saw the see their colors. I was in Memphis, teaching in Memphis, right? And uh, a little girl woke up, uh, walked up. She's like seven years old, seven to eight years old. And you know how we have the image of Christ in the image of uh, Cesar Brazil, right? Mm -hmm. So I asked her um, who this is. She said, that's Christ. She said, it was, um, Cesar Brazil was the, um, Christ, the white Jesus, right? And I said, well, who this is? You know what she said? The devil. She said the black Christ was the devil. This is what's in our kids' mind. This, this, this is what they have done to us. And that, I mean, we, and people say image don't matter. Right. But your kids looking at you like nothing. Like you the devil. And how I, we got it on video. 
And how is it that every dark skinned person has low self esteem? Bring it out. Especially our women. Especially our women. Especially our women. You know when they did the dog test, right? Oh, when they sit the little little uh, the little uh, little black girls down, right? And they put a black baby and a white baby in front of them. You ask them which one's the good, which one's the good dog? Damn, bro. They point at the white dog. Which one is the evil dog? They point at the black. Because all they ever grew up and seen was us hating one another. So that's all they see. And they see as white people having it all figured out that they're like God. But guess what? You know what I do with my dog? I tell them. Listen, the black girl is the good one. That's the evil one. The white one. That's all <laughs> crazy. I don't, and, and that's real. You gotta, you have to do that. If you ain't doing that, if, if you can't uh, give your dog the distinction of who is who is her people and who's not, the truth too. you need, you, you, you sleep. You sleep. If you plan, if she plan with a white dog, mm. and you and you don't tell her that that dang dog dog is the dang devil the Bible speaks of, you sleep because she gonna grow up and say that's the good dog, and she ain't gonna she gonna hate her own people. It's all in that mind state. You gotta, and that's why Brazil feel the same way. That's why here in America you feel like light skin is better. I guarantee you go to Mexico. Puerto Rico, shoot, you got freaking the uh, Haitians and uh and uh Dominican Republic. Oh yeah. This is the thing about that. They hate those on the Dominican Republic hate to see the uh, the dark skin. They're like, I ain't no. We. I see the dark skin the uh, Dominicans say I'm not black. <laughs> Listen, these people who did that test after they did that test, they asked them, all right, you say this girl is evil one. What color are you? What's the ugly one, right? And she related. To, she related to the ugly one because her, her skin was dark. Right. So that goes to show you how they feel about themselves. Self esteem, the officer was saying. Also, I want to piggyback on what Officer Noah said. I see. I just see this on Facebook. It, it it brought it to my mind. The programming that we watch. The there's always a light skinned one woman. And a dark skinned woman. For instance, House Party with uh, uh, Gina right. Martin yeah. and uh, and the other one, right? Gina was the one that was favored above the dark skinned. Well, you know they was both like a kid. Right. The kid chose she the light skinned one too. Right, and they they showed the uh, the dark skinned sister where she lived at. She lived in the hood making sugar down Kool Aid yeah. with eight people living in the same house, but. The light skinned one lived in a rich neighborhood. It had, you know, money. Right. And then you go, you fast forward, what is it? To uh, Martin, the actual show with the same character, Gina. Pe Gina had a man, Martin. They was in love. She had a good job. Pam was the one that was always getting clowned on. Always talking about. called B2B. B2B, B to B, buckshot, horse. She never had a man. She was always desperate, you know, uh, and also coming to America. Right. The dark skinned sister wanted uh, uh, Eddie Murphy, right. but he wasn't paying her no mind. He was going at the least of the light skinned one, right. who already had a man. Right. Then she was so desperate that she would even take the servant of Eddie Murphy, but he didn't want her. And then at the end, she even tried to take the ex boyfriend that Lisa didn't want. Her. Right. Okay. <laughs> you know I gotta go in, right? Go <laughs> in, bro. Tyler Perry. Oh, come on. Tyler. Perry, Coon Perry, is the freaking infamous. Tell down a black brother. He's the infamous. Give me a, a high esteem name <laughs> position. President of of this <laughs> of inner racism. That's what that is. Inner racial racism. That's what not inner racial, but inner racism, like you said. Inner racism. I don't think that's a word, but we just, we just made it. one. That's what Tyler Perry do. And our, listen, our people love it. The, 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 the dark skinned man, always the one that's beating on his light skinned wife, mm -hmm. putting the beats on her. Mm -hmm. Always. He's some nigga who got money, or he or is some white woman that he wants, or he's always cheating on his wife. All of that stuff. But guess what? Every time we go to the, to the buff light skinned dude, he's saving the day or something. Right. He could, the light skinned man saved the day. Like I said before, like Tyler Perry is in love with light skinned men. Watch this. <laughs> the movie that he even had women, he was the dude, and he was the one good deeds. 
He started with a Gabrielle Union, very beautiful brown-skinned woman. She was distinguished. She had college degrees. She had money. He wound up leaving her for the the the, the light-skinned woman that was couldn't even raise a kid and have a place to live, living out of a van. Listen, I gotta tell a right. parent story. This is what happened to me. This is happened to Tulsa, Oklahoma, right? All right. So I'm in there getting some clothes for my son uh, for the school year. This is um, a while back. <clears throat> You know, I write when I first came into the troop. So I got my fringes on. The girls, you know, they, they jake. Mm -hmm. They asked me about my uh, my fringes. So I go through and tell them, you know, about me, you know, we got to wear fringes. We God chose the people. And, you know, uh, women are supposed to be wearing uh, pants and stuff. And they was listening to me till I saw, you know, they were, she was like, uh, you know, they got men, um, women pants. I said, no such thing. So we, we went back and forward, and I said, like, to Tyler Perry and Mark Lawrence. She said, hold up, hold up. Tyler Perry is a man of God. Now, if you want to talk, talk about Tyler Perry, get out. These are like the, the, the workers. I'm like, I'm just telling you, no, we don't want to hear it no more. Get out of our store. We're calling the police. I had to leave the store. My mama was infatuated with Tyler Perry. When I came into the troop and told her that Tyler Perry was of the devil, she would not hear me at all. She was in love. Like, she wanted to marry Tyler Perry. I'm like, Mama, you want to marry a man that wears a dress? He's wearing a dress to appeal to the people about God. I'm like, what? So I'm like, God don't need you to sin for him. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad she repented, though. <laughs> I'm glad she's repented now. His mother ass came around. She started to come to the Sabbath. Oh, praises. Tyler Perry is out of her mind. I hope. All praises. Yep. All kick, praises. I got kicked but, out. But, but just think kick. about that. That's the, that's the hatred that our people put in. We joke about it, but listen. That's showing hatred. That's showing the difference between, not saying that we all one people. Okay, we just got different shades of skin. What it talks about, what's that? What's it, the speckled bird? Right. Or Ephraim is the uh, cake on turn. Those scriptures that show that we want to be different shades of of browns, but we the same people. We gonna be light as hell to the darkest. We the ones that was enslaved together. Get get um. What's that? Jeremiah fifty and thirty three. Jeremiah chapter fifty verse thirty three. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel. And the children of Judah were oppressed together. And all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. So we were afflict, afflicted in, in, in captivity together. We the same people. We just have different shades of brown. But guess what? That's what gets us to hating one another, man. These dang freaking movies, these shows, these dang, they all, it's always something they got to do with some type of the fire factor of this. Always. Always. It's always the super high, pretty light skinned girl in the right. next video. And the and the they try to pick a, a a moderate but decent, you know what I'm saying? Type of they try to downgrade the darker right. sister. Let me say something. Yes. Some family matters and fresh prints. Un Vivian was a dark skinned woman for like two or three seasons. <laughs> Next thing you know, in mid season, you got a light skinned woman right on the set. I didn't know what happened. Right. Then you got uh uh what was the Winslow's name? Mrs. Winslow, basically. Harriet. Harriet became <laughs> super light overnight. And everybody act like nothing happened. Nobody had a press release. Nobody <laughs> Officer, oh, it's witchcraft. It's just like the music. When you hear, like I was telling you yesterday, you hear a uh, song that, like, that's, a, that's a stupid ass song. Stupid, right? But they play it over and over and over. You find yourself bobbing your head to it. Like, damn, I like that now. It's the same thing with the TV. It's witchcraft. You put something in your face that's like, ugh, like, you know, like when they put men in dresses. Like, they put it in comedy first, right? Until they make it to where, it's common. They make, you, right. they make your eyes used to it. They test the waters. Right. To see how far they can go. Right. Each I got a trip for it. Go ahead. Get, um, it's in, um, uh, 
Ephesians. Uh, Ephesians, I uh, read chapter 6 and 10. Officer Apollo made a new word. Interracism. I'm going to use that. That's no, exactly what it is. Uh, 11. Start at 11. <laughs> Ephesians 6 and 11. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm saying Esau do that all the time. They did it with the homosexuality. Deal. Right. Desensitizing. Yeah, that's what that's it's called. It. Desensitizing. That's it. I, couldn't, I couldn't think of the word. I tried, to, I tried to explain it. Let's go ahead and put what? one of these. Let's do this. Let's get P. Diddy. Let's get P. Diddy. Get him in a, a masculine dress. Get him in a kilt. Yeah. That's what they're called. Yeah. Like a Scottish kilt. Yeah. Make it look fashionable. Put Let him get on the BET Awards. Put pockets on it and stuff like that. And make it manly. But you know what's crazy though? A lot of people are like, hey, this nigga got a skirt on. Then they see Kanye West do it. Then they see another another person, celebrity do it. They're like, you know what? That's the, I like that. Yeah, I think that's cool. Omar Epps got one off. Right. The dark Negroes. Dang. The dark Negroes are the ones you see with the day dresses on. You, you don't see the light skin man with them. No, you only get the truth on IsraelUniteRadio.org. <laughs> I ain't seen a light skinned man yet with a dress on. You well, I'm, like I'm, a model or something. I'm thinking right now, and I'm like. It's the dark skinned brothers. Dang, that's no, crazy. Y'all don't realize. And the dark skinned brothers like the it's supposed to be the masculine type of that's usually like the We the manly man. Right. The manly man and uh the light skin is like the pretty upper boy. echelon, pretty boy, don't want to get dirty, I'll make a lot of money. But guess what? They dehumanize it or demasculated the dark man. They don't want to see dark skinned men as in power. That's this is it's all said all this stuff. I would not do it. Periscope is quiet, bro. They like, look, that knowledge got dropped on them. They like, I mean, it, it's 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 that's knowledge. It's right? real, man. It's it's that, it's us. The and Bible it has talks everything. about it, right? The Bible talks about it. We about to get it right now because you see, what our people fail to realize, they think they need to pick up a gun or or we gonna need to do something. All you need to do is repent. That's right. Because you don't know you don't know who your enemy is, and you don't know how to fight him, right? But the scriptures give you. You don't know what's going on. I'm going to show you. This is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God. Get in the scriptures. Get in the scriptures. Come on. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What's the wiles? Meaning the tricks. This TV is tricks. Right. This radio is tricks. Do you understand? Tell a lie in a vision. Television. And I'm gonna tell you right now, them Jew-ish, they run it all. I'm just gonna tell you straight. Uh, read on. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not against flesh and blood, so it's not a war that's gonna be physical. We can't get no guns and go like you know and win with this war. We but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In high places. CNN and all them, they sit in high places. They behind closed doors. They got the, they got doors that Jay-Z can't go into. Because they talk, they have a discussion how to keep you down. Right. What uh, Bill Cosby tried to buy a uh, a television station? You see what happened to him? They said this Negro, we gonna get him for rape. We gonna put some stuff on. He still, you know what? The freaking subway dude was in the child pornography, right? Right. right. Oh, you're right. Child ain't going nothing but a couple weeks. Bro, that's why I forgot about it. This, Freaking Bill Cosby went on for how long? Oh man! And this, it was alleged. Yeah, it's still not finished. But it's, no, it's finished. It's, no, it's no, not. No, no, it's no, no, it's no. Not. It was alleged, though. You're right. It was alleged. Stop. Listen, statutes of limitations. It's so long until you can commit. You can say, okay, this crime is still valid. That's why it, it, there was no reason for them to even go to trial because statute of limitations was not going to let. Even if he did do it. 
it's over. It ran out of the course of statutes. Actually, it, it it was right here borderline. Why? Right. Of statutes of limitations. Like like this something was set up. It was set up. It was. They, they smeared him, bro. Bro, but, and, he, and he still, and he still, they got him as not guilty, and they still talking about the dating wrong his whole life. He the only one had like a positive. When you looked at, mm -hmm. he was positive to us. Right. Right. And then if he would think about it, if he would have got that TV show, they couldn't curve him then. You think they was gonna be able to curve him? No. But watch this though, man. That's actually the only family black people really want to. Right, the Hustables. Right. The Hustables. And, and they knew it, bro. Right. So if he would have got that show, what you think he would have done? Oh, he would have changed the game. Yeah, if he would have had that television station, it'd be realer than real. He would have changed the game. And a lot of and a lot of these these uh these these little rappers and all this stuff, they would get mad at him for telling the truth. Pull your dang pants up. That's why people don't respect you. Oh man, Bill Cosby, man, he. He's he a gold. He's he a sellout. That's no, what he you talking know, about. That's what you need to do. <laughs> you get mad at this man for telling you, listen, you're talking about one of the most successful black men that we've had. Doing positive stuff. Right. Hey, like, this is how you know, uh, Periscope said, y'all want us to believe that Bill Cosby raped a white woman in the 60s and lived. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. It was, Come on, man. Is, but he was going... Oh, uh, but, but, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. These are ugly white women. This is Bill Cosby. Why do Bill Cosby need to rape you? And he got he has multi millions. He back don't, bro. This is Watch all. This. No, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. I Come on. You up, bro. Are you really these these terrible bad Bill Adi body? No, I'm not saying this. Bill Cosby was a saint. You know, you no. gotta keep the commandments. Right. But what I'm saying, he was going. He was He was going to. Uh, <laughs> He was going to these parties and um at the Playboy Mansion and stuff like that. Right. Right? I was about to say that too. Go ahead. They had kids at their Playboy Mansion. Why they ain't bringing that stuff up? Right, because she said she got raped when she was 15 years old. What's she doing at the Playboy Mansion at 15? So, yeah, so they should be looking at, uh, what's his Hugh name? Hugh Hefner. Hugh Hefner. Oh, they ain't gonna look at him. No, of course not. you know why? Some of them chiefs. <laughs> Some of them chiefs, them governors, they ain't no secrets. That's what right. it is. <laughs> yeah. They in there. They in there. They cheating on their wives. They saying weeks. Hey, babe, I got a uh, convention on They swinging with men. Don't get it twisted. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So just imagine that. <laughs> but, 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 another, but another thing, though. Check this out. Even back in the 70s, everybody did the drugs. Everybody. Exactly. Everybody did the, the Mickeys and the, the cocaine, cocaine and all that. That was, that, was that, that was that era. So now all of a sudden, oh, he drugged me. No, you was high. Already. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> you was high. But you probably talked about it. How heavy the cocaine scene was, was when he came in. Right. And that don't make it any that don't make it any any good that they that's what happened. But you can't black say this dude, come on man. He just tried to do something that the white man didn't want him to do and they roadblocked him. They but, humiliated him and roadblocked him. But guess what, though? Guess what? Oprah Winfrey, oh, the no, queen no. lady of the century, no, bring that. Oh, she, get, she got her own TV station. Right, but guess what? It's not on regular television. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold that, on. But she got her own station. No, wait. What? Go ahead. A Jewish man, she is pulling all the strings. Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. I forgot his name. If somebody know his name, uh, oh, shit, put it on there, bro. She answered to this dude. They got a uh, article about it. I forgot his name, but he, she don't, she, she don't face. She don't face. She answered to him though. She just don't do what she want to do. Trust me. Right. Trust me. I believe that. I believe that. But Bill Cosby wanted all rights to. I think it was a, either CBS. It's one of those state CBS. NBC, something like that. He went all the rights to it. They said, ah. Oh. He had the money to buy it, too. They like, ah, oh, nah, nah. I think the first name is Jeffrey. I don't know. But I know that he would have probably changed some stuff. He would have changed, look. It would have been more positive family stuff to build the black. That's what I'm assuming because of the Huxtables. More, more movies that's basically in, uh, empowering black families to get out and do, like, Everybody probably wanted to be a dang doctor like he was. He made a different world. You know, with the with the, the, the Huxville girl right, going right, to college, right? That bruh, a lot of oh. men, uh, a lot of men and women in that time. Look at uh, what was it? 
uh, House Party 2. It was a college scene. Because why? A different world was out. They had all these other black movies with right. black men and women in college. Hey man, that's when college going to school was, was cool. Yeah. That's, that's why the most I say, no man shall save you. No man ain't gonna be able to come save us. He said I went to school because of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you know what I'm saying? No man should save us. And he had the money to buy this thing. The most I say, no, you can't have that. You gotta come repent. Repent. All this stuff that they got, well, even if he did have it and did anything positive, it wouldn't do anything because until our people repent. Right. Period. But we just, you know, that would have been good. Yeah, but there ain't nobody doing anything positive. The black woman is always a whore. She's, she's, she don't want right. to be committed to no husband. The yes. black dude get treated unfairly. They look up to the white man uh, for, she's basically... <laughs> Having an affair with a very, you know, it just makes us look bad, man. Look at, these, look at all these commercials, all of a sudden, like we have a big woman and she loud mouth. Mm -hmm. Almost all the commercials, think about it, almost all the commercials, anytime they have a uh, dark skinned, heavyset woman, she's loud, obnoxious, nobody wants her around, they don't like it, she, she very old, like she wants sex, you know what I'm saying? On movies, and, um, um, Commercials. Think about it. And they also go in the sports world, like how they did Serena. Mm -hmm. Remember, they said Serena like a man. Serena not, was a man, is what they said. Oh, was a man. You're right. Was a man, and so forth. They showed a He's picture. Okay. That's yeah. what they said. They was calling her a man, gorilla, all kind of stuff. They was calling her. But not only that, though, it's another. It's a white girl that's just as uh, cut up as she is. Actually, more cut up than she is. Oh, but she's straight. She's she's what white. So she's so athletic. Saying, hey, yeah, <laughs> that's what they call it. Right, but this woman is a listen. All that what we're saying is all this comes around to be uh, this self hatred right. that we have amongst each other, and that we need to repent. Period. We need to repent because we are getting afflicted. No matter what you think, that self hatred stuff is missed it out the way. You know, you still getting afflicted at some right. point. Right. And we got to come back to keep God's commandments. Because we are afflicted people. We're getting afflicted over here in America. Just imagine what Venezuela probably like, dang, bro. I'd I rather, I rather go through this fool thing and figure it out than to get shot dead by the people that's supposed to be patrolling my dang country. And not only that, you know and, you. And we look at, yeah. You know you're oppressed. Right. Here, it's a, it's a mind, because you don't know you're oppressed. You think you're free. You think you. You know, yeah, the that's your country. country, right? Right. This is the worst type of captivity. Well, you, you don't know. even know you in captivity because you because you think you're free. That's why Deuteronomy, get Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse uh, is it forty-two? One of all things. Oh, we just destroy forty-eight. Hmm. This is Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verse forty-eight. Come on. Therefore, shalt thou serve thy enemies. Which the Lord shall sin against thee. We're going to serve our enemy that the Most High God sin against us for everything. Come on. In hunger. In hunger. We want food. Venezuela needs food, right? They ain't got the money to buy food, right? They don't even get the food. Esau is going to give them a proposition on what to do. The offer that they can't refuse. They can't refuse it because mm. they need food. We got a call. Tell me, Esau is the devil. Go ahead. Caller, what's your name? Where you from? I'm Mike. Uh, I'm just, I'm a uh, Emma Reed from here. I just wanted to say this. Uh, the same thing is going to happen to. Uh, I was uh, I was paying attention to the debate with uh, 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 Bishop Nathaniel versus that uh, uh, what happened down in Texas. Y'all remember that? Yes, yeah. sir. All right. Ever since then, I started to notice how all all of a sudden everybody now is now trying to shut the IUIC down. They call out in front of them a hate group. They call them from all these things. They're doing the exact same thing that they did to to uh, uh, Bill Cosby, to any black person that's standing up or uh, trying to be positive towards their own. Right. And that's all I'm saying on here. They, they're gonna they're gonna do something to try to maliciously uh, destroy uh, the thing and whoever else. Right, you know, make up something like you just heard. You just heard about the the, the one with the, the little training situation. They're trying to put him in the same box with uh, 
how you like to see as, as a hate group that wants to go around uh, uh, beating up homosexuals or killing the homosexuals. Right. And you know what's crazy? The, the truth of the matter is, they all. So you know what's crazy? You know what they try to do? Now anything that happened that somebody associates themselves with being an Israelite, right? They put us on the front right. on the front panel. Right. They put us up there. They show our face. They show our you know us out there doing something. So basically they yeah, are trying to they, what they doing, they trying they to They can't beat this truth. They can't. And they, what it is is Esau is using these other camps to do it. To try to to try to expose or or uh, this member is united in Christ. Guess what? We keep the commandments, man. That's right. You can't stop it. Right. We keep the commandments. We're going to continue to teach our people who they are according to the Bible. We're the ones over there in freaking Ghana, in Jamaica, in, uh, in the UK, Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. We out there in these countries to tell our, show our people. This ain't no vain glory stuff, man. I always do show the world like, oh, yeah. Go ahead, I'm listening. Look at all black women and look at dads. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so look, you, at, look at all women who follow the law and look at dads. Right. Look, look at all men who follow the law and look at, and look at dads. Right. We, we, as, a, as a whole, we're not really running into the kind of problems that the rest of the, the, the black society is running into. Yeah, and it's all because we're following the law. That's all I was going to say, though. Ex you, 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 know, talking about. you excellent. You absolutely right because that's what's going to happen. That's what Venezuela is going to have to do. That's what Haiti going to have to do. The Dominican Republic. They're going to have, uh, Brazil. They're going to have to keep the commandments. They're being afflicted. Yep. Only to go and seek the Most High God right now. It's that time. You know what I'm saying? Judah is rising up. Benjamin is rising up. Now it's time for Levi to continue to rise up. In Northern Kingdom, we need, listen, Northern Kingdom is the majority of the tribes. Just imagine, that's what most of Israel is, is, is Spanish and uh, native, native tribes. Right. So just imagine how much people need to repent right now. We think we got it figured out because you're waking up. Now it's time to get the Northern Kingdom up. You got something? Yeah, that's what God said. Can somebody give me 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14? And that's the thing. We're going to continue to do this work. We ain't going to let no no, no articles, nothing, no YouTube video about is united in Christ to stop us from doing God's work. That's right. Because it don't matter. If you ain't doing God's work, it don't matter. Period. It don't matter to us. We're going to continue to do what we're supposed to do. These other nations have always scoffed us from doing the work of the Most High God. They've always scoffed us for building a wall for Jerusalem. They always scoffed us for trying to wake our people up out of these captivities. It's nothing new. They can keep talking, but God's moving go keep moving. Uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If they kill me or any of these officers here, this truth is still going to go throughout the four corners of the earth. It will be back, Lord willing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 2 Chronicles 7 what? 7 14. The book of 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will give and forgive their sin and will heal their land. That's for all you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You are called by the Most High's name. You are his chosen people. You must humble yourself. What does that mean? Forget all the crap you learned in these captivities, all of this idolatry, all of this fornication, all of this doctrine that you've been indoctrinated with, and seek his face, the Bible, right. the commandments, right. the Bible, the commandments. Hey, the brother Astro, uh, Astro Ethos, uh, because I'm backing up what you're saying. Of course. You're you, you doing it right now, brother. You say you can, you'll love to, uh, read, uh, to study the Bible with us. Listen, go online at IsraelUnite.org. Uh, register for online class. We have classes three times a day, seven days a week. All right? Go on IsraelUnite.org. Somebody post this. Several people post it. So everybody that's new on here can see it. It won't just go up one text and then go up. Y'all type the website in, please. All right, IsraelUnite.org. Hey, I got a uh, 
precept back up with y'all saying. Go ahead. You know, Acts chapter 5, start at verse 34. And I'm going to set it up like, um, you cannot do nothing against this truth. Like the officer was saying, the officer was saying, you can, you can kill us, you can do whatever. You can't, it's, it's out now. We're waking up. Right, it's, the damage is done. It's, it's <laughs> over. It's, it's done. over. It's, it's done. It's, this is what the Bible said. We the only people holding like We hold ourselves back. Right. From from learning this truth. We hold ourselves back. Out. That's why we gotta Bring go and uh and debunk. Like he said, like the brother just said, he already said, after the debate, it seemed like everybody trying to come against Israel United in Christ. You know why? Because now the the, the cat is out the bag. Christianity is garbage. They see who the most I deal with. Islam is garbage. So what else do you have? We exposed and said, listen, you the Israelites. It's all over YouTube now. Right. Y'all, we the, we the Israelites? Man. The top scholars that are the vice president and the president of a Christian college got destroyed. Their doctrine got destroyed. Dismantled. By the elders. And then the, the other leaders, the captain and the officer, finished them off. So they understood that it's not just these two men. It's the men that they're, they're, they're teaching as well that that have the understanding. Right. We become a threat. And it was doctors of the they so called. They doctor, they, they like the Pharisees. Yeah. The, the scribes and Pharisees. Hey, hold on. That's what we're about to read now. Go ahead. Read that. Because they thought they was going to tell this truth down. They think they're going to tell this truth down. Watch what the Bible say. This is Acts chapter 5, verse 34. Then stood, then, excuse me, then stood there up one in the council a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. So he would tell the people, listen, back up, give the apostles a little space. Read. And said unto them, ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching this, these men. Because they were going to Kill these men. They was gonna kill them. But Gam Gamaliel stood up and said, "Hold on, don't give yourself some space." He had respect among the people, so they was, they listened to him. Read on. For before these days rose up uh, Theode uh, Theodos, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about four hundred, joined themselves, who was slain. And all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. Right, because he came against God. He was nothing, but read on. After this man rose up Judas of uh, Galilee in the days of the taxi and drew away much people after him. He also perished. And all even as many as obeyed him were dispersed. And now refrain, I say unto you. I mean, and refrain. I'm sorry. And now I say unto you, refrain. Refrain, hold yourself, read. From these men, and let them alone. Leave them alone. You can try to mess with us, but you better leave us alone. Read. For if this counsel or this work be of men, if it will. If this counsel or this work be of men, or this is something that we just came up. I'll come to your house, you know, and you know, like we made this stuff up. Right? If this be of men, read. It shall come to naught. It's going to come to naught. We ain't gonna grow. Ain't nothing gonna happen. Read. But if it be of God. But if it be of the Most High God. Read. You cannot overthrow it. You cannot overthrow it. It's nothing you can do. That's what God says. That's what His Word says. That's it on that. No. Less happily ye be found even to fight against God. That's what you're gonna be doing. So, so hold on. So <laughs> what's happening is. <laughs> When brothers try to say, try to expose us and all this stuff for teaching the people who they are, and we ain't on no vain glory stuff. People want to bring up the name and all this other stuff. You can't do nothing. You fighting against God because the Most High God put the Spirit on us to go out and teach our people, and they'll lose that fight every, every time. single time. Have you noticed every time an allegation that came out, it's been false. It backfired on the people that put it out. Every single time. I had a pastor tell me, he said, you plan on teaching the commandments to your people? I said, yeah. He said, expect me and people like me to fight against you. Three weeks later, he dropped dead. <laughs> You're not going to win that fight. Your arms are too short to fight with the most high God. Oh, man. Oh, man, okay. Talking about faith building. 
That's why I said, if I leave this truth, I'm going to be in the same boat. Yeah, that's, that's how I feel. If I leave this truth, if I bug out, I'm going to get put to death. Immediately. That's how I feel, because I knew better. I know better. I know the worst thing you can be is a vagabond. The worst thing you can be. All right? But we're going to take a quick break. You got something to say, officer? Go yeah, before we take that break, up in verse 37, it says, After this man rose uh, Judas of Galilee in those days of taxing, meaning that they were going through a type of depression. Just like Venezuela is going through that inflation, they're getting taxed. Let you know that we were going through the same thing in this time as well. That's why I wanted to bring out on that. All right. You got to take a quick break. All right. Make sure you guys call in the 405-293-2029. All right, make sure you guys also hit the donate button. All right, hit the donate button. Send donations so we can further push this truth. All right? Uh, DJ, Emma Kizzle, back to the music. All right, listen. I'm happy right now. Your wife passed? Oh, <laughs> it's all like popcorn. Yeah, yeah. It's all good too, bro. So, check this out, y'all. I ain't get no personal business. I might have to blow it up. Hold on. Check this out, y'all. It's official. To the left. Left. Y'all see that? It's official, y'all. Jacob and Sons Critic Counseling LLC. It's the real deal. No, it's not a degree. I got a, I got Jacob and Sons. I'm actually incorporated. I got an LLC now, man. It's, 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 it's legit. Y'all playing around. You want credit counseling? Holler at me. Alright? I don't want to come over. You got a job over there. I've been waiting on that. I ain't hiring yet, but I am going to need some, need some people to hire. You better get happy. I got a website coming out soon. Uh, it's going to be a little different. I'm targeting the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We don't want to need help. We don't want to need to be educated about this. So I ain't going around. You need credit repair? Email me at Jacob and Sons CC at gmail.com. Yeah. These laws is not suggestions. You ain't heard about it. You better learn about it. This is not the time to be guessing. Who you vexing? I'm in Oklahoma. Pray you get this message. I'm helping you no matter what state you're in. I'm in the field. All crazy. Let's make it happen. Somebody put my emails. Yeah, Jacob and Son. CC at Gmail. Hey, post my email, uh, 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 Officer Noah. It don't matter what state you in, I can help you out. Right. Can I manage your retirement fund? I'm not a manager with that. <laughs> when it comes to that. Uh, you want credit repair, I can help you with that. Thank you, thank you. If y'all can post the email again. Get ready for the homies that he reaping. It's not with all that strife, little boy. 
and be a man and get down with the plan. Cause the most I ain't playing. So you know that's why I say he's the people. I've been to hell in hot water trying to find out. Uh, we actually be, we trying to get a Spanish uh periscope. I think I'm not sure if Austin gonna start doing it. But, um, we gotta put an S on it. It's Jacob and Sons, CC at Gmail, not Son Sons. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. Right, right. I ain't never been a week. I ain't never been a week. I don't know. I just I just bought some old polos. I think these are better. I, they both dope. But these polos I got the dry fit. Yeah. I need them, bro. Like I love that black. I love that black. Heard what I what I use with the boys. That's why they so sharp and hard. Same way. I was using them. I was using them, bro. Dropping them elbows on. The one to run from a battle. We get active. Um, Profits Apparel Is it dot com or dot org When Paulo get back He gonna tell y'all I'm not sure if it's com or org But it's Profits Apparel That's some dope stuff That's some dope stuff Yo he got a website for Yeah, he got, he got a website for Profits Apparel. Well, oh, that was who's asking. Yeah, like, 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 yeah, which one is it? What is it? Is it org or uh, com? Bruh. I wanted to read this, bruh, but I don't think we're going to need to. It's no necessity, but bruh. It says, uh, watch this, y'all. This is some more information on Venezuela. It says, the official price now for a bag of corn flour used to uh, used to make the everyday Venezuela staple of arapas, for instance, is 190 uh, bele- uh whatever their currency is. $19 at the official exchange rate, only a dime or two at the black market exchange rate. So they're paying $190 for something that usually costs a couple of pennies. For a bag of corn flour. You go to you could go to Walmart right now and buy corn flour for two dollars and fifty cents, maybe three dollars. hundred and ninety dollars. I gotta work on my job. I make fourteen dollars an hour. I would have to work for 12, 11 hours to buy one bag of corn flour. The most high, when the most high said he ready for y'all to repent, he is ready. You don't understand For y'all to repent You understand about that repentance it's Very important That's why we push that Repent In the faith of Christ We, we push that in heaven Because The most high is bound by his word He cannot lie Once we start repenting He will come to our aid He tore us up And he will bind us up Right The reason the sister asked Why is it so high because the inflation rate, this is y'all call The inflation rate is at 1,642%. If you know anything about currency, inflation is the amount of uh, how much of a dollar or, or your currency is worth against other currencies. So 
the currency basically is worth nothing. The paper it's printed on is worth more than the actual money itself. I can't hear Because the oil, like they were, basically their currency, I'm, I'm guessing was based off the oil that they were exporting out. So the the, uh, the oil prices dropped from $100 a barrel 10 years, 16 years ago to $44 a 19 cent now. So with that amount of decrease, the money then decreases with it. A loaf of bread was like $400. Please believe if corn flour is $190, a loaf of bread is like $400. Oh, man. Videos on YouTube about Venezuela eating dogs and cats. If they're eating dogs and cats, what's next? Their children, which is a curse of the Most High God. That's the only thing stopping them from eating them is the dogs and cats. It's gonna get worse. Hey, why, why so does Zephaniah sound like so like he eat, so he's eat rapping with sunflower seeds in his mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Cause they broke into a stable and ripped the horse apart. Oh man, they eating all kind of bomber foods. Most high gonna deal with them for that. Right. Most high gonna deal with them for that. I mean, the, people are like, how could you eat your kids, right? I know people are probably saying that. When you hungry, <laughs> anything look like food. Listen, For real. Listen, the most high, y'all don't know, man. He put the losers on the behind. You don't understand the most high done this to us. Yeah, ain't nothing you can do about it. It ain't like, oh, I'm gonna eat my kid, I like it. No, 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 no. You don't understand. The most high will make you eat your kids so you can stay alive. You don't have a choice. They dying. So you feel like, well, I don't waste it. I'm hungry. It's not like they kill their kid to eat their kid. They kid died from lack of food. So it's just a dead carcass there. You know what I'm saying? So it's sad. It's a curse that the most I put upon us for what? Not keeping his commandments. Keeping the commandments is just that severe. Look at all the punishment that happened to us for not keeping the commandments. What I mean is, when I say the most high thing to you, you might think, oh, I'm going to fight that. I ain't going to do that, right? Listen, he, he put that on your mind. The most high done it. Y'all thought I was playing, huh? Y'all thought I was playing. You see a light skinned, you see a light skinned brother, dark skinned man doing it. They got on dresses. They think they tough. This is what Esau have done to us, man. Thinking that homosexuality is okay, that gender means nothing. So what's wrong with our people, man? The dark skinned brothers the one being demasculated. Right. How could the Esau, Esau is the devil? Because he put a Jedi mind. Tr shalom, shalom, shalom. Most high Christ bless. Thank y'all for tuning back in to IUIC Radio, twenty four seven radio station. This is casting down an imagination. Today's class was uh, what was it? Again? The Israelites are a cursed people. All right, we are a cursed people, man. All over the world, <clears throat> no matter where we go, we are in cur We are being cursed. Because we broke God's commandments. No matter what country, what neighborhood, what city, I guarantee you, if you if you are rich 
and you live in a, in a, in a high level neighborhood, right? Amongst Esau, the so called white man. I guarantee you, they, they, they saying something about you. They gonna, they gonna call on you, you got too many cars. They gonna mess with you at some point. At some point, they're gonna mess with you. Remember when you said your wife, was it, was it Reggie? Uh, was it Reggie? I think, I mean, yeah, I think so. Reggie Smith, so. he used to play football. He's from Oklahoma, right? Played football. The brother was moving into a, a white neighborhood. Drove in there. <laughs> you say it better, man. You, my wife is telling me a story, right? They was moving into this neighborhood. Nice neighborhood, like, you know, that rich neighborhood, right? They pull up, U-Haul and everything. They get out. A white man, the next door neighbor, the white man, and uh, stood outside was like, is there anywhere that we can move that y'all don't come? <laughs> I'm sorry, I never got that. They hate you, man. There's nothing. You're a cursed people. You're, they, they, they stole, <laughs> they crazy, stole right? your land and told you, Negro, I don't want to see you. What kind of stuff is that? They picked you up on a boat, had you living in their house and on their property, and now that you so-called free, they don't even want you in the neighborhood no more. Look, you said she said what? You can't put up a basketball goal? I don't want no niggas putting up no goal. Let's this, this, this imagine that. Because that mean that little boy gonna go over there and like have to go over there and play basketball. He's gonna get dunked on school by your son. And they got oh, basketball goals. Go to the police over there. <laughs> They got basketball goals in their neighborhoods. They just don't want to see you. They don't want to see you doing it. That's why, the, man, listen, you bought your home, you should be able to do what you want to your house. That's right. But guess what? That's why they have those HOAs and all that stuff that accommodate them, but don't accommodate you. That's, that's I know they're they doing that to a brother right now, calling the HOA on them and doing all kind of crap. <clears throat> right. That's crazy. But yeah, uh, what do you say? Stop. Record. So repeat, repeat. Must wake up before we go home. Right. We must wake up. It's time to repent. Uh, Northern Kingdom, you blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, man, it's time for us to repent. Things are going to get worse for us. The scripture said, in your affliction, you shall seek me early. All right? So we being afflicted, this is supposed to make you repent. You wonder why we get shot dead. You wonder why we ain't got food to feed our children. Is because we're being afflicted by the Most High God. It's nothing you can do about it but repent. That's what He wants you to do. Right. And some good do good do come to us who keep the commandments, like the officer, you know, his business and stuff. Congratulations, brother. Uh, give me that Deuteronomy 28 and read five and six. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse five. It's the blessings and the curses. All right. If you don't keep the commandments. This thing's gonna happen to you. But if you do, good day, even in this captivity, good things will happen to you. Alright? Read. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 5. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Your business. Your business will prosper if you keep these commandments. Read. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be. When thou goest out. And that's all I have. I just want you to go drop the mic, sexual chocolate. You ain't going <laughs> to explain what that is. <laughs> I mean, we, it's self-explanatory. You're going to be blessed when you come in and blessed when you're going out. Everything your hands going to touch, the most high going to bless it. <laughs> yeah. So drop mic. So I'm out. <laughs> and you don't need. And you don't need a pray a personal prayer package for you. You don't need. To. Right. All you gotta do is keep the commandments. Yeah. You don't gotta send us no money. All we ask you to do is keep the commandments in the faith of Christ. Right. That's what we ask. Then give me Joshua one and eight. This is like one of my favorite scriptures, and this is what we need to do. We listen. That, Lord's will, man. Listen, we got a big, big job to do, man. We really have big jobs. Along with repenting, which is the first thing, and keeping God's commandments, we got to start. Once we get to that level, we got to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. We got to start rehearsing the righteous act, start building. The scripture says in Jeremiah 29, build ye houses and dwell in them. Right. We got to start building homes, right. buying land, harvesting our food, uh, creating businesses and so forth so we can employ each other. Right. We ain't got to worry about not having to keep the, the 
uh, working on the day, high holy days and all this right. stuff, man. These are things that we got to set in place. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully, hopefully people are motivated to do those of you that got skills, those of you, we need a lot of things happening in this one. We need right. some pe tax people. We need more credit repair people. We need uh, more uh, real estate agents, more brokers, all this stuff. Lawyers, man. doctors. Lawyers, doctors. We need those bad. Carpenters, everybody. We need everything that works in the city, we need. Right. Barbers. We got barbers out there. Why is it now? All praises. We need that. We need to be groomed. We need to be presentable. We ain't got we need to be going around all the time looking like looking crazy. We need, we got he about to go to Bell Bottom School next truck month. Drivers, yep. We got truck drivers, people that got their brothers that got their own business in the truck driving industry. Right. We got I want a I want a dang uh, grocery store, all kosher grocery store. And then right, we, we need Spanish party. teachers. Right. We need everything. Right. So mechanics, we need to start putting our mind together and start start creating our own wealth, all right? We have to start doing it. Business administration, you're right. right. We gotta start doing it. We gotta start employing our own people, using, but you gotta do what? If you want money, funding for some type of business, you gotta have what? Your good credit. Right. So make sure we out there trying to push this to push this truth to the next level. All right, period. Uh, Christ said that the uh, kingdom of heaven ain't gonna come by observation. Oh, no. Meaning you have to do something, all right? So you got your scripture? You got Joshua, Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. One. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Because this Bible cannot escape from our mouth, man. We have to constantly have the Bible in our mouth speaking it, teaching our people. Constantly speaking the word of God. All right? And it's like I learned, I'm in a Spanish class, and I learned teacher making you make, uh, teach Spanish. But then again, the next year, or you outside of it, you don't speak it at all. No. You're not going to learn that language. Not. Just, no. just being in class one hour and 30 minutes. No, you got to continually, continually uh, read the Bible and study that in order for you to stick up in your mind. Come on. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. You got to meditate it day and night. All right. That thou mayest observe to mm -hmm. do according to. To all that is written therein. Come on. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then the Most High God will make thy way prosperous. If you keep the commandments, if you're constantly keeping the commandments, and you're teaching your people, the Most High God is going to make you prosper. Is that saying that you're not going to go through hard times? No, that's not saying that. Because Sirach chapter 2 said you're going to go through it. Mm. Coming in this truth, you're going to go through some stuff. But that's what builds your character. Gold is tried in the fire. That's right. So when you're going through things, you got to make sure when things get tough, you throw the commandments out. You throw your drive out. But you got to keep going. You got to keep keeping those commandments, man. And the Most High God will bless you. He will make your way prosper. Read again. From the top? No, what you just read. The bottom of that piece. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Uh -huh. And then thou shalt have good success. Mm. Right. Then we will have good success. When we keep the commandments and we keep our mind focused on the task at hand, all right? Please, continue to do that. When it get hard, listen, you got to call on the Most High, like Sirach chapter 2. When you're going through something, go to Sirach chapter 2. It should build you up. Because the Most High God said, woe to the faint hearted. Mm -hmm. Woe to the person that loses patience. Give up. Right. You can't give up. It's a fight. It's a fight. All right? So, when Christ said to those who endure, push through the, all this stuff you're going through. Nah. Right. So, that concludes our uh, show today. Thank y'all for tuning in to uh, IsraelUniteRadio.org. All right? Thank y'all for tuning in to IUIC Radio 24-7 radio station. Make sure you guys hit the donate button. We love y'all. My name is Officer Paul Lewis to my right. Officer Abia. And to my left. Officer Yalosa. And we are out this thing. Happy Sabbath. All right? The Sabbath is tonight, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All that rested. Whew. Get the fellowship with your, with your brother and your sisters, all right? So, shalom, brothers and sisters. Most high Christ bless. We love y'all. DJ, oh, back to the beauty. music. Yeah. Shalom everybody, whole class, we had to find.
see y'all Monday. All right, see y'all Monday. Y'all stay in the spirit. Continue to endure, man. Continue to endure. All right. Shalom, Mosai, and Christ bless.